Uh, to start with, uh, please tell people in a few words uh, what you do for a living. I do uh, a, a technique called timeline healing and I also do personal consultations. Uh, you could say it's spiritual psychology and with intuitive and psychic uh, overtones, you could say. And uh, then I'm also author of seven books on various aspects of personal growth. And the idea is to get people to understand who they really are, which is powerful, creative, spiritual beings, and not just human beings. So the purpose of the work is to help people awaken to their true nature. We're vast beings of light, and we have these little human experiences which is just a tiny facet of who we are. So that's the theme of my work. And it's mostly workshops, private sessions, and occasionally tours, events to sacred places. So I do maybe a couple of those a year. But it's mostly the timeline healing trainings and then all day workshops uh, on various topics. What are the themes uh, that you have approached in the books you, that you have published? Well, the first book I, I wrote was a self-help manual called Life on the Cutting Edge. And then my next two books were on the history of the Earth and the Earth changes, what to expect in the coming years. Of course, the second book is now dated because it was written before 2012. And many of the prophecies that were in those early books are coming to pass. In fact, most of them are, but it's happening a little bit more slowly than the original timeline predicted. Then I have another self-help manual, Soul Integration, which is about integrating the different aspects of the soul. We're multidimensional beings, and so when certain levels are out of balance, uh, we lose power and we feel helpless, powerless, oh, I can't seem to get my life together because different aspects of the self are out of balance. And so it's a, it's a course in how to integrate the different parts of the self. And then there's another book on the history of Earth where we talk about extraterrestrials and how the human form has been around for millions of years. Homo sapiens have been around for about 100 million years you don't get this in ordinary history classes. <laughs> and then we have uh, the mystery of time that explores the nature of time and then the nature of unlimited energy. It's the last book. Did you also do research work in the field? How did you come to these conclusions? Well, uh, I've always been scientifically oriented. My father was a math and physics teacher. And so I've always wanted to investigate and explore and research information rather than just blindly believe it, but I had some very powerful spiritual experiences in the 1970s where I literally had what energy called the living Christ just poured into me and I suddenly saw very clearly many levels and dimensions of reality, including what was going to be coming from my life on earth, what my mission and purpose was, as well as the mission and purpose of humanity. And so I had a lot of direct experiences of these higher dimensions that I write about. You have a therapy technique which is not hyp hypnosis, but somehow helps people to go back to the past. Can you tell us more? Yeah, it, it has elements of hypnotherapy in it, as well as past life regression, theta healing, and the Silva method. Those are some of the techniques that are similar but it is a unique formulation for, for time travel into the past where you meet your past selves and give them a healing. And it's based on the law of non-locality, the non-locality principle of quantum physics with respect to time, which essentially states that all time is happening now. So our past traumas are happening right now in a non-local sense. The, the linear mind has a hard time understanding that because it thinks past, present, and future, which is necessary in order to function in this world. 
but this is more about uh, the ability to simultaneously tap into what's taking place in the past and the future. And so we go into the past and we make changes which then changes the future. You told us before that one of your books comes with prophecies. What is it about? Well, the prophecies, Earth Changes and Beyond is the new title of the book. It's really about um, the fact that humanity is going through what today would be called a harmonic divergence. Uh, another way of saying it is that you can no longer sit on the fence and say, well, I think I'll work on myself and grow and evolve, but uh, there's a football game on the television and, and I, I need to pop open another beer. Not that I have anything against football and beer, but many people, that's their whole life when they're not working. And so it's about realizing that we are these powerful creative spiritual beings and creating a new world based on this new paradigm. And in case you haven't noticed, our economic system is almost the exact opposite of higher spiritual principles. It's all about win-lose, you know, the haves and the have-nots and get richer and richer and the poor get poorer and poorer. And that's not the, the truth of the greater cosmos. There's an order and a balance and a perfection in the cosmos that is not based on this win-lose, you know, the, the power elite and the common people kind of system. So it talks a lot about how to overcome that. And there will be a population reduction. There's no way around that, whether you believe it's a conspiracy theory that, that somebody in power wants to depopulate. That seems to be a, a fad that's going around lately, the idea that the powers that be want less people. Well, that's, maybe there's a few rather insane characters that want that, but most of the so-called power elite, they want more consumers buying more things so they can make more money, and they can't do that if half the population is dying. However, uh, the immune system of humanity is being stretched to the breaking point with all the stresses of modern life, all the chemicals in the food and water, and the side effects of things we can't talk about and things like that. So the, the immune system is going to cause probably at least half of humanity to pass on from the earth. And then there's going to be about another 20% that will leave through war and famine and poverty and, and earth changes and all that. And then attrition, meaning lower birth rates. And if you look right now, the sperm count in men has dropped 50% in the last 30 or 40 years. And women are having a harder and harder time conceiving children. And, and that's especially true in the Western world. Parts of Africa and Asia, the population's still going up. But you look at Western Europe and the Americas, population is dropping. And that's because it's harder to get pregnant you know, with all the the uh, endocrine disruptors and the food and water and people not feeling like they can afford to have a child in today's economy. I mean, in, in, in the Western world, people can't afford a house when they're young, young and, and just out of school and, oh, I got a great job, but oh, I can't even make my house payment. <laughs> so, so it's changing and it's going to be rocky, a rocky road before these new principles, which aren't really new, but uh, they're going to seem new to a lot of people. Uh, before, out of necessity, people learn how to work together and stop these insane wars. <laughs> That's another topic. <laughs> yes. Uh, about this uh, discussion, um, there's also said that the resources from the Earth will end one day. And this is why we can't be so many anymore. Well, it's a question of managing the resources in an enlightened way, having enlightened distribution systems, enlightened economic systems, because the Earth is capable of supporting 10 billion people if the, the proper distribution is achieved. You can turn the deserts into gardens with today's technology and things like that. So it's not about reducing the population, it's about reducing the what I call fearitis, which is the, epi the real epidemic or pandemic is that of fear. People are afraid to discover who they really are inside. And the government and the media is often promoting fear. Oh, let's be afraid of the bird flu. Let's be afraid of this. Let's be afraid of that, you know. And people don't 
stop and look objectively with an with a, a impartial, new, neutral point of view. Let's investigate what is the truth about what's really going on here. They just hear a story, oh, oh the big bad Ruskies or the big bad NATO or whatever it is, you know. Oh, okay. <laughs> When do you think we will have peace and uh, harmony on Earth? It's coming. It's absolutely coming. And it's, it's going to be a rocky road to get there, as I said earlier. Um, I would say by the year 2040, there's going to be a significant movement towards greater peace. The population may be half of what it is now, or even a quarter of what it is now, for the reasons I just discussed. But those who are here are going to realize, hey, we have to get along with each other. Th these wars have to stop. Poverty is completely unnecessary. Nobody has to go hungry in this world. What can you tell me about the timeline healing technique that you perform? Well, a session typically takes about an hour. And uh, we usually cover two or three traumas. Uh, sometimes we just go to early childhood, oftentimes we go into past lives, and a lot of people are open to past lives these days. It's, it's no longer this, this fringe theory. Uh, in fact, there's young people who can remember in detail their past lives, and they're totally accurate with their history and everything. So we go back oftentimes into past lives where people were persecuted. Maybe they grew up during the Dark Ages and, you know, they were burned at the stake, things like that. Those are the more dramatic traumas, but almost all of us have some type of trauma like that in, somewhere in our past. So we go back to those kind of instances. And then there's also a manifesting technique where we go back to the powerful, uh, successful versions of ourself in the past and we project that into the future because the law of attraction says what you put out comes back to you. Maybe not immediately, maybe not in exactly the same form, but there is a reciprocal movement in the universe. And so we learn how to access those highlights of our life in the past and then use that to create a more powerful future. So when people wake up, they remember what they saw during this technique. Well, uh, the phrase wake up in this case, uh, we're, we're in a theta brainwave state and most people when they're generating theta brainwaves are in the sleep state. So you do have to train yourself to stay awake when you're in theta and, and experienced meditators know how to do this. The more people come to the workshops and learn the meditation, the better they're able to stay awake. And a lot of people say, well, I'm not psychic. I don't, I don't get psychic visions. How can I do a technique with past lives if I can't even see anything? Almost everybody that goes through the trainings does have some psychic functioning by the end of the training. Uh, if you meditate frequently, I learned how to, how, to med how to develop my psychic and intuitive abilities in the Silva method back in the 70s. And there's a series of meditations, and after you get used to being down in alpha and theta brainwaves, you're able to start accessing the psychic information. Oh, that's another question I wanted to tell you about the meditation and about how we can use what we see. What can people do to have a better life, to simply be happy? Well, the first thing is, this sounds very simple and almost too simple, is learn to love ourselves. And how do we love ourselves? We start by appreciating our good qualities instead of constantly focusing on our bad qualities. You, you know, the, the education system and most parenting is always focused on, well, you got a 95% on your exam. Oh, you missed five problems. <laughs> and... Uh, and so we focus, and sometimes you have to do that. I mean, if you're building a bridge and you're an engineer and there's something not right, you have to focus on fixing that, of course. But we take it internally and we start thinking there's something wrong with me. I'm not good enough. I, I'm, I'm not worthy. And, and the religion, of course, perpetuates this, the idea that we're miserable sinners and maybe if, if Christ feels sorry for us, he'll come and save us or something. That, that whole mindset has to go and we have to realize that God loves us absolutely all the time, nonstop, and we can tap into God's love. And the first thing we can do is, is appreciate these marvelous 
bodies that we have with 50 trillion cells all working together, which is a miracle in itself. And instead it's like, oh, I don't like my thighs. I don't like my stomach. <laughs> you know, the things most people say when they look in the mirror, you know. And um, so we have to learn to appreciate, okay, so there's a little extra kilos here or whatever, but we're going to love ourselves and appreciate that we're these magnificent spiritual beings and that God loves us 100% all the time, even if we've behaved badly. That's the hard part to get. It's like, well, what about murders, rapists, and terrorists? Exactly. Yeah, God loves them too. If they knew that God loved them, they'd change their behavior and they wouldn't be behaving in a horrible way. Uh, but if God loves them, they go to hell? No, they're already in hell or they wouldn't be behaving that way. <laughs> <laughs> I understand, and uh, since you believe in God, I want to ask you, what is the relationship between free will and destiny? Yeah, uh, that we were joking earlier about that question because it's a very difficult question. But basically, they both exist. Free will exists on one level or dimension of reality, and then predestiny exists on another level of reality. And what's confusing is that there's also a level of conformity which is not true unity. It's not God's will. It's, it's what I call imprisoned will. And that's when people are slaves to their belief systems. The a popular belief system, well, I'm helpless, powerless pawn in some power elites chess game. That's a belief system. And, and so that's at a level where there is no free will because um, the will is determined by the belief systems. I'm unworthy, I'm not good enough. Maybe Christ will save me if I pray enough times, that kind of thing. And then you have the level of free will, which is uh, I can think for myself. I don't have to blindly believe what, what I've been taught in school or the media or, or the medical institutions or, or the religious institutions. I can think for myself. I'm a, I'm a sovereign soul capable of creating my reality based on the quality of my consciousness. So that's the level of free will. And then beyond that, you have predestiny, which is God's will, where basically you, you turn everything over to God and let God create through you. And that's actually more freeing than free will. People don't realize that. They think, oh, uh, well, God's going to control me. No, God doesn't control you. You are a co-creator with God. And so that's the, the level above free will. And they both exist. All three of these exist simultaneously on Earth. Are people interested about the kind of therapy that you prefer, perform? Yes, well I mentioned timeline healing uh, and there's also intuitive counseling where I, I, I access what are called the Akashic Records which is a, you could say it's a universal database in the higher realms where, you, where I can access information about individual souls and the, the lifetimes those souls have had with respect to privacy, of course. I'm, I'm not going to go in and invade people's privacy if they don't want me to. But usually I'm able to find the, the cause of their suffering and pain by going back into past lives. And then we use timeline healing and other techniques, soul integration as well. But this is more or less just the inf information that's in the Akashic Records. Think of a large library with glowing colored disks that are pure energy and each disk has the records of that soul's incarnations and their soul lessons or what we call karma, which is nothing more than unfinished soul lessons. That's all karma is. You know, it's not this big mysterious thing that, that haunts you, stalks you like the Grim Reaper. No, it's, it's a um, system of, of, un, of soul wanting to learn certain lessons and then if they don't complete those lessons in one lifetime they, they try to arrange the circumstances in the next lifetime where they can continue those lessons. So this is about what you told us earlier that for some people this is hell. Their life on earth is the hell. When you feel guilty inside, when you think you're a bad person what are you going to do? You're probably going to behave badly if you think you're a bad person and then it's a vicious cycle and that's hell. It's like, you know, I, I hate myself so therefore I'm going to go out and kill people or, 
you know, whatever. And then, you know, the cycle just perpetuates itself. Another cycle of karma is attack, revenge, revenge, attack, attack, revenge, revenge, attack. Places like Israel and Palestine, that's been going on for thousands of years. And right now, Israel is more the perpetrator and Palestine the victim, more than the other way around. But in another lifetime, maybe Palestine was the aggressor and Israel was the victim. And so they just keep going back and forth, lifetime after lifetime, until they evolve out of this mindset, I have to revenge. Look at what's happening with Iran and Israel. Oh, we threw a few of our little drones this way. So now we have to have some missiles coming back this way. And pretty soon there's big missiles going that way if they don't stop. Fortunately, it looks like they're at this point not escalating, but that's kind of how these wars start. You know, I, I have to one better you. I have a bigger missile than you do, you know, and then, oh, now I have my bigger missile. <laughs> it's insanity. <laughs> I also wanted to ask you, on, on what occasion did you come to Romania? Well, I usually come here every year and I do uh, timeline healing trainings and workshops and a few private sessions while I'm here. And uh, it's a wonderful country. The people are great. The traffic is bad, <laughs> but you can't have everything, right? <laughs> so um, I very much enjoy Romania. My favorite town is Brasov, and that's where we're doing the workshops. Uh, it's got that, that beautiful Transylvania energy and plus the mountains and everything. And, but every part of Romania has wonderful people. What do you think about the Romanian people? Are they open to your kind of therapy? It, there's a lot of openness here. Um, I find the Romanian people to be very lively, very emotional, very engaged not as reserved as some of the countries I go to and uh, and I find that refreshing and we just had over a hundred people in our uh, workshops uh, we held them up in the mountains above Brasov and uh, it, yeah there's just a lot of interest in this work uh, I, I first came here I think in 2011 or 2012 right before the 2012 big deal that was supposed to be a big deal and it was a big deal but it wasn't for three days in December it's kind of an ongoing transformation that really got catalyzed back in 2012 so that's when I started doing workshops and seminars here and uh, a lot of them in Bucharest some in Constanza and some in Brasov so yeah it's a beautiful place also, I want to ask you, what do you think about Romania uh, between NATO and Russia and the war from Ukraine? Well, unfortunately, I th the European Union was a great idea when it came out, and but it's falling prey to the same forces that most governments, which is the crony uh, controlism, I think I would call it. And NATO, same thing, you know, they did sign an agreement with Russia not to encroach on Russia. So I'm not taking Russia's side, but I'm understanding Russia's viewpoint that they do feel invaded by NATO. And uh, the West, in my humble opinion, is making some very poor choices as far as their geopolitical stance on things. And it's unfortunate all we can do is try to educate people that there's a better way than you know might makes right you know and we're exceptional and we're gonna bomb you into oblivion because we're exceptional kind of mentality that unfortunately is in the West I mean and there's people in the West that want to to the last Ukrainian they literally said that they want to fight to the last Ukrainian well how do you think the Ukrainian people feel about that it's like they're not thinking clearly <laughs> My last question is, uh, do you have a message for the people that will see this interview? The message is do the work on yourself. Um, there's no substitute, there's no shortcut when it comes to doing your inner work. If you are upset inside, if you have traumas from the past, if you were abused by your parents when you were little or you were in an abusive relationship as an adult, Get the help you need, whether it's traditional therapy or the kind of work that I offer or that other practitioners offer. But do the work on yourself. Don't be afraid to ask for help because most people need help to resolve their traumas. Do, heal your core beliefs. You know, the, the, the belief there's not enough is, is partially responsible for these billionaires with a hundred billion dollars that aren't satisfied. They need another hundred billion and, and they often don't care about their workers. You know, that's a symptom 
of something deeper within them. And so each of us needs to do that work so that we really do become a better person and we can do more to help the planet. And until we heal our subconscious mind and our emotional traumas, we're part of the problem. <laughs>